I thrived on it. They'd invite me to their Christmas parties because they loved me so much. It was good pastoral training. I really enjoyed that. It was awesome. Finally, I got to work with people who were not saying, no, I don't want to buy this. Stop trying to push me to, my, to, to buy your product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was tough, the evangelistic training. But the pastoral preparation was wonderful. It was wonderful. I was there to help people, and they were more than willing to receive my help. They cried out for it. Oh, if we could just stay in that realm forever. But there's a bit more involved to being an entrepreneur than being the nice guy, unfortunately. Okay. But there's another nice thing, and I enjoyed that too, because it was also part of my strength, and that's to be a teaching entrepreneur, somebody who imparts knowledge. And that was great when it began by me training people how to use their computer and how to use the software. I could spend time all day sitting learning the software and all the things they were involved with it, and then going and sitting down and teaching people how to use it. That was great. I could use my knowledge. I could accumulate knowledge. I could, I could go on a learning phase and get paid for it. It was part of my job to learn new things and to teach it to others. And if you've got that teaching orientation, that's wonderful. If you don't, you're not going to enjoy this, but you're going to have to go through it. Because if you can't teach and instruct others and impart knowledge to them, it's part of being the entrepreneur. It may be your weakness. And you can't understand why you've been forced into a job to give technical support when you know nothing about the technics. Hmm? It's necessary because you've got to be an all-round entrepreneur. That's great. And then the Lord gave me the opportunity to get into online marketing. And guess what I was doing? I was selling my education. I was selling my knowledge. Well, you know what? I didn't plan to do that. I was forced into it. Yeah, I was forced into it. You know, I was forced into it. We were starving. There was no money. The income source that I had that was coming every month without me having to do anything suddenly dried up. And now I had to find some way of making money sitting here in a foreign land <coughs> with no source of income. So we went for a walk on the beach one day and I said, well, the only thing I can see for us to do is we must actually preach into camera, record the tapes and then see if we can sell the tapes and see if we can get an income. Hmm? Knowledge is one of the best products out there. And you know, because of that, I developed a knowledge, developed an entire training system for the entire fivefold ministry, for the apostles and the prophets, and now, by God's grace, for his entrepreneurs. We've got a whole business gang of information selling. Well, I could never have done that if I'd never become the teaching entrepreneur, could I? Teaching is one of the more powerful parts of being an entrepreneur. And you'll be amazed at what knowledge you have that can be imparted and that people are prepared to pay for that knowledge. And then came the more spiritual part, which took a little bit more than just hard work and knowledge. It required revelation. You see, the evangelistic entrepreneur, he sells and sets up business. The pastoral entrepreneur helps employees and customers. The teaching entrepreneur educates people. But then we come to the one who directs and motivates employees and customers, and that's the prophetic entrepreneur. It was great offering our training as a business, as a product, to sell and have people pay us to be trained as prophets. We'd sell them this beautiful pack. I think it was something like 25 tapes and printed books that we gave them. And we thought, this is wonderful. People will buy these. They will read the books and listen to the tapes and become prophets. They didn't. In fact, they didn't even listen to the tapes. They wanted to be spoon-fed. They wanted us to take them and mold them. 
Well, how are you going to do that on the internet where you haven't even met these people face to face? You do it only one way, by revelation. I, mean, I first developed my prophetic ability by marrying a woman who never told me what was going on in her mind. Well, I had to play 20 questions and try and guess what it is that I did wrong because she wasn't talking. Is it this? Is it that? Is it that? Well, eventually I started to get a revelation. Ah, I know what it is. That's your problem. And she'd react. Yeah, I got it. See? See? Yeah. Well, my prophetic preparation is another story which I've told elsewhere. But we had this kind of thing now when we're training the prophets. We've got to get revelation. And if you don't get revelation, they don't move. Prophetic entrepreneurship required a whole lot more. And it went beyond the realm of ministry. i tell you why. Because if we didn't get revelation and keep them studying, they weren't buying and we were starving. Do you know, the Lord took our financial situation to make me finish the entire prophetic and apostolic series. Because if my finance had flown in before that, we probably never would have finished preaching it. Right now, I'm moving to a new financial level. But it's not going to happen until I'm finished teaching and presenting this new course. And everything that I teach here is not coming out of my head. It's not something that I know and have full-blown. And I say, here it is. Let me tell you everything I know. I'm still learning. I'm getting revelation. I'm journaling every single teach that I give you. Prophetic entrepreneur requires a supernatural anointing from the Holy Spirit in order to function. We require revelation to put the training schools together, to put the publishing company together, to produce a ministry and now a business resource. Requires supernatural revelation from the Lord. God's given training in all the main areas. As he does for the apostle, so he does for the entrepreneur. And then finally, you need to be prepared in different kind of niches or groups. And I'm going to go through these very quickly because time is running out. Firstly, there is the technical realm, which is a very important area. I had exposure under telecommunications, under the laboratory, and then waterproofing of buildings, all different technical things, and then computers and programming computers. All of these are different realms. And today, computers especially are part of every business. If I did not have the technical know-how, this business and ministry could never reach the level that it is. But because God taught me computer programming, I could set up my own websites, I could program my own software instead of having to spend a fortune. It was a very necessary part. All of my technical experiences in all my jobs built me to a place where I can stand now as a technical expert. And then I had to get into that personnel division. And there I learned to write letters. Because that was part of my job. Every time a letter needed to be written to an employee, the big boss up there signed it. But guess who wrote it? Yours truly. Mr. Clark down at the bottom. I had to write the nice little letter. Dear so-and-so, it has come to our attention that some of those letters were disciplinary letters. We have been notified that you've been late for work three days in a row. This is not acceptable and not part of your job description, and we must warn you that we cannot tolerate this behavior. You've got to learn to say things to people in diplomatic ways, in legal ways. Now, these days, it's even more difficult. You've got to be politically correct. Well, you know, can you write letters? Do you know how to write letters well? Yeah, I'd, I'd go on a letter writing course to learn how to write letters. And I got very good at it. And today, I write emails all the time. <clears throat> now, I don't have to give them to somebody else to edit and check out and see if my grammar's correct. I learned that skill right there as a personnel clerk. I learned how to handle queries from people. To deal with people. Having people come in and say, I've got underpaid this month. I hate this company. Yeah? I learned to work with personnel, with people. I learned how to discipline. I learned how to encourage. I learned how to motivate. I learned how to work with people. And it's a necessary part. 
I learned how to offer services to people. In the life insurance industry, to offer the service that if you should die, your family will be taken care of. If you should not die, you will be taken care of. And then, of course, I had good old ministry training, and that's the ultimate service, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's the real service. It's called being a servant, in fact. Uh, God's servant. You need to offer services to people. Sometimes it's easier to sell a fixed product and say, wouldn't you like one of these? It's pretty. Would you like it in red, green, or blue? Yeah. When you offer somebody a service, sometimes it's not as easy, but yet a very necessary part of the whole business realm. And then good old MLM. Hmm? Selling in a group setting. Building up your level of commission. Attending these conferences where it was rah, 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 rah. Isn't it wonderful to be part of this company? All these thousands of people here all making money. And all the <clears throat> big shots who started right at the beginning, who built their big pyramids, standing up there and giving you all of their monthly and annual incomes and you envying them and wishing you could reach there one day. <clears throat> a different kind of niche altogether. And then the internet is a niche all on its own, isn't it? Huh? Setting up websites, producing information products, producing training courses, selling by email. Oh, that's a whole lot different than selling face to face. All these different realms come together in one big picture. The production of finance for the future. As God's entrepreneur, putting together a business structure that will tap the resources and the wealth of this world and bring it into the kingdom of God. If God has called you to be His entrepreneur, you will go through many various different kinds of preparation. Now it's going to vary according to the level of your calling. But don't be surprised if your life's been a bit confused. And when... Change takes place and you're going in a whole new direction. Don't complain and say, I can't understand what's going wrong. It could be that God's taking you through a new phase of your preparation. And when you've been through all the main preparation, then it's time to be trained properly for the office that God's called you to do. And then the training will begin. Now that's another